the southern part of Thailand near the Malaysian border, Koh Lipe sits among several other islands in an archipelago about an hour boat ride from the mainland. This teeny tiny island has several long beautiful white sand beaches and spectacular coral reefs submerged in warm, clear turquoise water, ideal for diving and snorkeling. Ten years ago, there were hardly any roads here and only a few guest houses. With the transformation to a market economy based around tourism, the island has rapidly shifted away from the local way of life and become westernized. The island is home to about 800 Aboriginal Malay people who call themselves Chow Lay or Sea Gypsies and earn incomes through tourism and fishing. Their homes do have electricity and running water, but the electricity and drinking water come from the mainland. They have wells and catch rainwater for non-consumption uses like washing dishes and bathing. This little bungalow has been my home on the island. The porch looks out into the garden where passion fruit, watermelon, and several other vegetables, as well as lots of other beautiful tropical plants, grow abundantly. The restaurant uses the vegetables from the garden and the food they serve, and also provide free drinking water, helping to reduce plastic waste from water bottles. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of plastic, every beach in the world now has plastic washing up with the tide because of our global plastic pollution. There's a lot that needs to be done to address this issue, but what we, as individuals, can do right now is to stop purchasing products that come in plastic, like pretty much anything sold by Coca-Cola or Nestle. I understand that this is a complex issue with many nuances and challenges and many to blame, but I can only control my own behavior. So I try to avoid purchasing products that come in plastic because it's better for the planet. And I refuse to support the companies that are responsible. I am really into the zero waste movement with the goal of significantly reducing or eliminating my contribution of trash that ends up in the landfills, oceans, beaches, and our home. Hermit crabs are not true crabs in that they don't have a uniformly hard exoskeleton and can't grow their own shells. They're more closely related to certain kinds of lobsters than to true crabs. Hermit crabs are omnivorous scavengers eating microscopic mussels and clams, bits of dead animals, and microalgae. They have two pairs of antenna and five pairs of legs. The first pair of legs is modified to form pincers, the right one, usually larger, that are shaped so as to cover the shell entrance when the animal is inside. The crab walks on its second and third pairs of legs and uses its shorter fourth and fifth pairs to grip the central column of the shell. As the crab grows and becomes too large for its shell, it must find and move into a larger one. The availability of suitable shells is often limited, so competition among hermit crabs for shells of the proper size and in good condition is intense. This is a sand bubbler crab. They eat edible organic particles in the sand. When the tide goes out, the crabs emerge from their burrows and start sifting through the sand. After they have scraped the sand grains clean, they roll them into little balls and toss them behind. By doing this, they avoid sifting the same sand twice.
beach. Look at that beautiful water! Look at that! <laughs> oh my god, that's so beautiful! I'll definitely have to come back. And I did, a dozen times. This became my own little secret hideaway. I'd planned to stay the whole day so I'd bring food, plenty of water, a book to read, podcast, my mask and snorkel, and I would just have the perfect beach day.